Say what? Hello and welcome back. It's time for Say What, where we hear from those connected to the industry about what's going on in our world of electrical apprenticeship. And this includes the topics that you have sent us, so please keep those coming. I'm your host, Cindy Sandifer, and I'm here with Todd Stafford, the Executive Director of the Electrical Training Alliance. It's Women's History Month, and I know I'm biased. I am biased. I will call that out. But we have some of the most phenomenal women here at the Alliance. And while I wish we had time to talk with all of them and introduce you to everyone, we do have a few joining us today. Okay. First question is, how long have you been with the ETA? So we're going to make sure everybody gets to answer that. Wendy, I would love to hear from you. I people. have been with the ETA eight years, going on nine years. Yay! Yay! Jenny? I've been with the ETA four years now. Oh. Or Miss Kit. I have been with the ETA for five years. Terry. I have been with the ETA 18 years. I was like, that's the vet right there. Oh, <laughs> it's like, right. yeah. Longest for last, best for last. I wasn't gonna, I'm not. I wasn't saying saving the best for last. I'm not getting into that. But so our listeners have interacted either with you the work you do, or both. Like, sometimes you're talking to them and doing this work with them. But can you tell us, there's no way for you to sit here and list everything that you do at the ETA. We know that. Todd knows that. But, like, give us an idea of what you work on, what you do, so the listeners can kind of connect to to you and, and to what you do. So, let's see. Terry, you got a mic? Yes. Um, for the listeners, I do your completion diplomas for when um, – the program is completed. I, I send out the diplomas for you, and I do the ACE College credits. So, transcripts, like. <laughs> and um, so people that want to further their education and request a transcript, I process that as well. Yeah. As well as take care of me around the office, other things we might need too. So. I, I'm the office manager, yeah. and so anything that's asked of me, I do. Yeah. Anything. Yeah. Anything. I can attest to that. And then goes above and beyond. We won't even, like, again, that's why we can't sit here and talk about everything that everyone does. But those diplomas are a little important when you're graduating a class of apprentices. That's that's something they're really, so I, having been on the other side of it, requesting diplomas from you. I, I was, yeah, it, you made it easy. Let's say that, especially when we made mistakes or we're a little late in requesting them. So don't do that. Listeners, do not be me. Do not request late. We don't want to do that to it's, poor Terry. It's, I, I, I get it done. You I do. It done. So you do. it's, although we have over 300 programs, they're not, you know, half of them are not requesting late requests. Yeah. So when it happens, it's periodically and we make sure I make sure I take care of them. Yeah, thank you for that because that, that helps them out in tremendous ways because the apprentice they look forward to that credential and mm. if it's late getting there it's an issue so yeah super important. Wendy you've got a mic I see. Yes. What do you do? A uh, <laughs> little bit of everything. I'm the money person so. Which we love. Which we love mm -hmm. so I'm tracking our revenue our expenses doing budgets lots of spreadsheets um that's really it, overseeing our accounting department. Mm -hmm. Wendy and seems nice now, but I always have to go to her. Wendy, I got this money I want to spend. So you look at me and say, oh, for what? How are we going to do this? Can we do this another way? Can we do it in, inside? I get it, yeah. I just say yes, boss. <laughs> I was going to say, do you get to actually tell Todd no? What I have not told Todd no. I probably will never tell Todd just, no. Well, she just says think about it a different way, which okay. is the same thing saying no. I get it. <laughs> she helps us to expand our yeah. thinking. That's what it is. got to think outside the box sometimes. Yeah. That's it. Numbers. See, me and numbers are not friends, so you do the opposite of what I would ever want to do. So, But numbers are great because as long as your numbers are accurate, every piece to your puzzle fits together mm -hmm. perfectly. So, Well said. Yeah, I don't do puzzles well, so, you know, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. Kit, tell me about you, what Hi. you do here. I am an instructional designer on our curriculum development team. So I touch uh, most of the pieces of curriculum that we offer at some point or another, you know, whether it's editing our textbooks or preparing them to be printed and shipped out to all of our users. Or most recently, I've been spending the majority of my time on our new generation of curriculum in the CML courses. So that has been a really unique learning process for our whole team, but especially people like me 
who really get to take on more of the instructional design portion of it, where I can take that highly technical content that our great subject matter experts and directors, you know, help in writing and make it something that really bridges the gap between content and our students so that they can, you know, change our lives and do this great industry that we all love so much. Yeah. So a lot of, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Kid always, kid always helps me remember as far as the fact that goes that I'm a technical thinker and I understand it, but I'm a good, just give me the paper, give me the, give me the facts, give me the numbers. I'm like, I don't need all the graphic design to go with it, but she shows me, yeah, that's much better. And I see how it affects the learning in much more ways than what I can see and generate uh, on curriculum, which we used to do directly, which somebody like Kit needs to show us now how to do that because we don't know how. That's not our expertise field. So thank you for what you do for us yeah. as well. Well, it's so hard when you've been in this industry, you know, for a long time and you've had a really successful mm -hmm. career. All of these things that our students are learning for the first time, you've known, you know, and you're an expert at. So I think that's some one of the most difficult parts for our subject matter experts and everyone is just to tell the student what they don't know because they don't know what they don't know. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and then there's that creativity involved, the design stuff that, again, it's not it's not numbers for me. Like numbers, I just, yeah. but like that stuff I love. I just don't have the, the mind for it. So it's beautiful when you can take it and make it something that makes sense, yeah. right? You make electrical work make sense and that's a whole different, yeah, that, that's a whole different thing. We'll just leave it at it's that. tricky. <laughs> it, yeah, tricky. That's a good word. Miss Jenny, I think most of the JTCs and AJTCs know you, have dealt with you, but tell us a little bit of why they do. Well, I'm the aptitude test coordinator. Um, so basically, I, from the beginning to the end of dealing with aptitude testing, I have my hands in. So from um, receiving orders and filling orders and answering questions, then I get the returns and I take the returns and I score the tests and then I get the test answer sheets, the scores, I'm sorry, back to the programs and just communicating back and forth with the JTCs and the training directors and their administrative staff. So it's that's yeah. anything to do with aptitude testing, I'm in it. So. Jenny makes that sound very simple, but it's not when you think about the magnitude of the numbers going through there. You think yeah. about 60,000, yeah. when you talk about those kind of numbers, what happens there? Right. Exactly, so. Oh, and billing. Oh, and billing. And I send you the bill. <laughs> <laughs> and she says she works with Wendy. Wendy will come. Yeah, it's a whole it's a whole thing. But that's really a good point. It's like however many apprentices we have in the apprenticeship, that's not telling you how many people have taken the aptitude test. Because a lot of people take it that either maybe they decide not to do it or they don't get in or whatever right. their situation. Mm -hmm. um, and I love the connection. I wasn't even thinking about this before between Jenny and Terry. It's like you get them when they're trying to or starting out on this process. And then you get to come along and like, here's your completion. Mm -hmm. So it's really cool like to see that, that kind of that connection there. I love that. <laughs> love connection. So I think I'm correct that none of you came from the electrical industry. Um, okay, so what has working here taught you about, is it, if anybody wants to answer, like what has it taught you about this, possibly at one point foreign to you, kind of mm -hmm. work, I guess? So I remember starting and I was, I started somewhat in the curriculum department and proofing the workbooks and instructor um, books and just seeing words that I'd never had seen before, like, semiconductor and um, <laughs> conduit bending. And I'm like, what is this? But now over time, 18 years later, I'm like, ah, I recognize that. I know what that is. Mm -hmm. So that that was amazing to start proofing these books. And I had no clue what I was reading or no understanding of what I was reading. And then over time, it made sense to me. Right. Yeah, like, it's almost like, you know, we always say, like, it's Greek to me because we don't understand the Greek language. And so it started out where it's like, what? Yeah. And now you're like, oh, yeah, I know that. Yep. Yeah. Not, probably not getting out with tools on a job site. No, 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 no. We're no. not there. Not that familiar. Not that <laughs> We're familiar. not that familiar. Right. <laughs> but I recognize the with words. And <laughs> I, like, when you tell people where you work, um, for us, right? Not, right? not for you, but right. for us, you know, you'd be like, in the electrical construction industry. And, I, you know, and then it's like, but, I, you know, my next line is, I do not do electrical work. I know nothing about how to tell you to fix something. Right. So let's go ahead and take care of that right away. Wendy, what have, anything you've learned? Uh, yes, I've <laughs> learned ACDC is not a group. Um, <laughs> or not just, just right? Not just, just a group. A group right, right. <laughs> uh, honestly, every day I'm learning something new. Um, just getting into this new position that I'm in, talking, sitting down and talking with directors and actually learning the back side of it, because I'm only looking at the financial side of it, 
Um, that's really neat. And then seeing like inventory, like trainers we're building, because I'm only seeing what we're invoicing. I'm not seeing it. So when it comes in the office, I'm like, oh, what is that cool looking little thing over there? And then someone's like, oh, that's a trainer we built. And I'm like, oh, okay, that's interesting. But it's, um, I mean, you constantly learn. You never stop learning in this industry. And I mean, I don't do electrical work either. So <laughs> establish that. Kit, I mean, I guess you're how does that work for you? <laughs> you know, it's really interesting because whenever I talk to people and like tell them what I do, whether it's people I've met through this organization or just in my personal life, the first thing people always ask me when I tell them that I help to design electrical curriculum, they're always like, oh my gosh, you must be so savvy now. Like you must be able to wire a house and this and that. And I am so quick to stop them that I am the least qualified person. Um, but it is, it's really, really interesting to see how many, assets or how many ways this industry touches mm -hmm. everything in our lives. I know like when I first started on the curriculum team, far before we did any of the CML courses, I did a lot with the outside programs and when we were bringing all of those courses onto the LMS. And just like I wasn't even thinking about like traffic signal and all of the wires that are running underground all of the time. And it sounds so silly to say I can't believe how widespread the industry is because of course it is like everything is powered but until you really get in and you learn about it it's just so impressive like how much our journey level workers need to know like from the code side of things to just being able to like navigate all of these complex codes mm -hmm. and then into the really sciencey stuff with your ac and dc theory and wiring circuits it's just it's really impressive yeah and that, I love what you said, because I think we all, like, these different touch points. So you're seeing, you know, money to build this stuff, and then you see it, and you're like, wait, this goes on to teach someone how to do something in a hospital where someone's receiving critical care to keep them alive. Like, it's like how this, you know, and it all starts, I'm thinking Jenny, right? It starts with you uh, a lot of times with this, you know, here, take this test. Let's, if you're not there, let's find ways to get you there so you can come in because you want to do this work and you're helping them as they finish and writing their curriculum and making sure the stuff's, I mean, it's just like, we really do all touch it. And Greg has said it a lot, like everybody, like accounting has this part in the curriculum, of course, like the aptitude test, the managing the Maryland office, right? Forget co completion certificates and right. ACE credits, like managing the Maryland office makes it possible for this work to get done. So it really is like everybody is a part, like you are women in the industry. Now, I, you know, and I don't want to offend because the women that have gone through the apprenticeship and have done the, the actual work with their tools, like I'm certainly not taking anything away, but you know, as to, to have this part of it. So speaking of that, I guess, what's your favorite part of what you do, Jenny? Anything that stands out as your favorite? My favorite part is the customer service. I love working with the programs. I love work, being able to help someone answer a question, um, expedite an order, you know, because it was, oh, they threw this on me at the last minute. Uh, I just Been like to there. help, and I'm able to do that with my position. I'm able to communicate on the phone. I'm able to communicate via email. So it's just, it's fun. It's really fun when I get to put faces mm -hmm. to names, because I just basically deal in names, but... Um, I, I guess that's my favorite part. It's just the customer service aspect. So it shows how critical what every, everything we do at every level, what it is. I mean, we, we all touch that end user, no matter what your position is here. And each one of those spots are critical on the way. Any of them fail, we fail. Pretty much, right. pretty simple. Yeah. So right, yeah. And I, I had the privilege of working in an office space with uh, Jenny. I think it was like when she first started. Mm -hmm. So I was really near. So I could not eavesdropping or anything. <laughs> I just could sometimes hear conversations. Um, <laughs> And so I was like, man, like, again, she's brand new to this industry, to this work. And I'm like, girl, you are nailing it. Like, I was just like, wow. Like, if I were on the other end of that call, I would have felt cared for. I would have felt important, Good. you know, and, and focused on. And I think that's, man, that's important. Kid, I'm coming back to you because you still got the mic. Okay. Favorite? Um, <sighs> Favorite person at the company. I'm kidding. Oh, Don't answer that. Sure. No. Don't answer that. <laughs> Cut. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know... I am just always fascinated by 
what I get to do here. You know, I think it's a really unique perspective as an instructional designer to be able to learn about these things really alongside with all of our apprentices. Um, you know, in any other industry, instructional designers would probably have a pretty good idea of the stuff they were teaching, like it's soft skills, or maybe it's like for uh, school age children, you know, but doing it in this really technical industry, it I have to make myself understand it because I have to put myself in the feet of the student so that I can know the kind of support they need to be able to learn these concepts, you know, because it's crucial to their education and their future in the industry. So I think my favorite part is just learning and, you know, having to spend that time with the content, breaking it down myself so that I can understand it, so that I can help any student understand it, you know, whatever kind of support they need. Right. Oh, wow, yeah. Uh, well, well said as well as, uh, you don't give yourself a lot of credit there as well because you're doing something that one else is doing, pure something. Mm -hmm. We're building something that's unique. Uh, it's pretty technical in nature, but yeah, you do a very good job at it as well, so thank Thanks. you. Yeah, new, like, talk, and that's a lot of, I mean, I think all of you have experienced, like, the changes that are happening in our industry. Mm -hmm. You know, we're all, again, kind of touch, touch point by that, too, right. as well, so that's, yeah, that's a big one. Favorite. Favorite part of what I do, since I'm a numbers person, um, Tracking spreadsheets, budgeting, um, as our organization grows, mm -hmm. we have to change the way we do our accounting, um, figure out new directions, um, establishing budgets for new projects that we want to work on and create. I mean, when you love numbers, it's like the perfect job. I don't like to read, though. I'll be honest with you. I'm not a reader. <laughs> Note to self. Don't Note send to self. Do not send me long anything emails to, read. to Wendy. Yeah, yeah, no, no. Unless it's an Excel format. Okay. Do not send it. I'm going to change. She's going to get Excel yeah. spreadsheet okay. emails. Okay. We can do that. I can make that yeah, work. Wendy likes it when a plan comes together. So yeah. yes. I like that, too. It's a good deal. That's Yeah. Mm. That's important. Terry. 18-year Terry. Yeah, um, there, there are several things. Um, one, I love the family dynamic that our company have, um, the support, um, the understanding. I love that. I've always loved that, and, and that's, that's major. Um, but very simple, the thank yous I get. I can just feel the vibe through the emails of thank you, Terry. And just adding that name just makes it that more important to me. Like, it just, I feel it. Like, mm -hmm. they're very, our, the people that we help, our customers, are very appreciative. Very appreciative. Oh, you stuff. make it personal to them because, like, again, that's 50,000 you'll have this year interfacing with you one way or the other. You make them feel like they're personal to each one of them. That's what I they appreciate. Yeah. So, and I think yeah. just having an attitude of wanting to help right. mm -hmm. and being there for them, um, they're just grateful for that. Yeah. And so that small thing makes me happy. Yeah, it's, it feels small and yet it's not. And then it makes you want to give that back, I bet. Like, okay, you did this for me. I'm going to do that for the next person to make them feel what I felt. Yeah. Okay, I have to give you all a hint. So when we say, when he's here, and we say, who's your favorite staff member? It's just, yeah. He signs the check. It's Todd, right? So all together now. Who's your, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> like, Todd. Yeah. Lady. Then we'll go through other recordings. Oh, yeah. We're, yeah, when you leave, we'll be like, it's Ben who gets a big shout out for all he does, um, all the work. So, yeah, it's like, no, it's Ben. Or, yeah, we'll just, whoever I've got to interact with that day, that's who my favorite is, you know. And whoever their least favorite is is mine because I need something from. There's no least favorite. Let me make that very clear. But, ladies. Thank you. I mean, you're busy. You're very, very busy. And I appreciate you taking some time to just tell us about who you are and what you do. And I know it's helpful for the listeners because it's like, okay, now I can put these together. This is that person that I've been working with or, you know, the person that's designing the stuff that I do. I mean, that's just really, really cool. So thank you so much. Yeah, and thank you for each of each of you for everything you do for us. I just thank you very much because, again, I'll say this every day we do and I work in our business. We can't succeed without everybody working together. You make it happen. Thank mm. you. Yeah, thanks. Todd, that might have been the most fun podcast we've ever done. Yeah, that's an everyday job here, right? <laughs> we do that every day. That's what makes it unique, interesting, lovely what we do, the fun, entertaining. Which I like it that way. Uh, if you enjoy who you work with, you, you enjoy your job, you tend to do it better, which is they make it happen in more ways than one. Yeah. Yeah, no doubt those are four, again, as I've mentioned, of the many phenomenal women at the Electrical Training Alliance, but the outtakes, which you all will not get to hear or see, those were like... Maybe some of them. Maybe, maybe we could do some, some bloopers for you, um, but it's it's just that. It is that collaboration together, getting all the work done and having a blast doing it, even on the stressful days. So I 
yes, so it was fantastic. So thanks to Jenny and Kit and Wendy and Terry for being here, for taking some time away from your busy days um, and giving us a chance to learn more about you and how you support our industry. And big thanks, as always, to the listeners for taking time to join us. Remember that we want to hear from you. If there are topics that you would like us to discuss, if there's you know the chance you might want to join us on a podcast, send us an email at to, not at, to, say what, S-A-Y-W-A-T-T, at electricaltrainingalliance.org. Our next episode is going to be coming to you in April, and you don't want to miss it. We are chatting with some folks from Jobs with Justice. You want to know what that is? You got to tune in. Until then, until we drop that one, you stay connected with us through our newsletters, blog posts, join us on social media, subscribe to this podcast. Until next time, you stay powered up and we will see you later. Say what?